All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to be looking at some differentials between the noise floor and preamps of the um, QU16 from Allen and Heath and the X32 from Behringer. Now, as I'm going through these tests, uh, it's bringing back um, kind of stuff that I took for granted, maybe a little bit going through and testing stuff. You know, looking at these little consoles is, okay, we're going to, you know, find some response differences and there's going to be nuances. Um, but it's also reminded me the depth that I went into testing and um, knowing the equipment that I work or worked with when touring as an engineer and also as a PA company owner. Um, you know, about four decades ago, uh, early 80s, I started, um, you know, accumulating sound gear and um, renting it out, very small time, and then over time worked my way up to being, you know, an engineer for some of the world's largest acts and uh, mixing some of the largest festivals and shows and arenas and stadiums throughout the world um, with, you know, Soundgarden and Chili Peppers and Blink-182 and all the kinds of cool bands, Rage Against the Machine. Uh, the gear that I brought with me, you know, as I got to these higher levels was very specific. I chose exactly the equipment I want and I knew or know that gear inside and out. Every aspect, where it distorts, uh, how much noise it has, how, what can interconnect to what effectively, where I want things in the signal chain. And I knew this um, it, extremely, I studied it to a very, very fine detail as you probably can guess. Uh, there's kind of a, a feeling of, hey, a really good engineer, it's not the gear, it's the human that makes a good show. And that's true. Uh, a great engineer, a good engineer, can get a really good sounding um, show with just about any equipment. doesn't need to be great. And it's fun to do. Take some crappy gear and make it sound good. Also, if you're looking to get to the top of the heap, if you want to do the world's biggest, finest, grandest shows, and you want to constantly perform at the highest levels, then knowing every single detail and getting exactly the gear that you want or that you need or that you know and all the nuances so that you can overcome any variables that come your way um, is uh, extremely important. Um, I don't know, I so thought it was interesting as I'm going through this and finding nuances that would um, throw me for a loop a little bit, maybe catch me off guard if um, I didn't know them beforehand. Um, so let's take a look at the noise floor and the gains on these two consoles. Uh, first thing I noticed was the preamp gain only goes down to minus five. You turn it all the way down, it's at minus five on the Allen and Heath, and you turn it all the way down and it's minus 12 on the Behringer, which means a Behringer can take a signal that's 7 dB hotter than the Allen and Heath. That said, on the Allen and Heath, the clip light, as I did in another video, comes on 6 dB later. No, it comes on at the same time. The actual signal distorts 6 dB later on the Allen & Heath, which balances things out. Um, I was able to run a hotter signal into the Behringer, and maybe we'll do that later if I can get through this. Um, Let's take a look at noise. I've got both gain pots turned down all the way. Minus 12, minus 5, and I'll put these headphones on so I can hear what you're hearing. And let's bring this up. And let's mute the outputs. And that is outputs muted. Now let's check our analog gear because we've got this inexpensive little analog on. So I'm going to unplug the input to it. There's our reference point. That's how loud, I'm gonna bring this faders all the way up to plus 10, all the way, and uh, way in the background we hear some noise and whatever's built into the recorder there. Now we'll plug in the console, and there we go. We've got some noise there, and this is the X32 outputs muted. Alan Heath, and we can look over here at the scope, which I can put it 
500 millivolts, boom, boom, boom. There we go. And back to the app. As you can see, there's quite a difference between the two output levels of noise with them muted. Um, all right, let's go ahead and unmute and see what happens. With the QU16 muted, unmuted. And all right, not hearing a big difference there. Let's go ahead and go back to QU16, unmute the input. And Alan Heat, I mean, uh, Aaron Deer. All right, so unmuted with, um, oh, the input is shunted here. Um, so it's 150 ohms load short on the both inputs wide together. So they're both seeing that exact same uh, load input. And there we go, Alan Heat. So X32, a lot more noise in the same situation. And back to the reference point, noise of the analog console. Um, let's go ahead and add some gain. I'm going to go to plus 10. Okay, here we can hear the um, clicks uh, as I bring the gain up and down on the L and E. And I'll go to plus 10. And we'll go to the X32. And we'll listen to that. Oh, that was at minus 12. So we'll go up to plus 10. All right, so that first test, we had the gain set as low as they go on both. It was minus five here, minus 12 here. Now they're both set at plus 10, so they're both on the same playing field. Um, let's go ahead and do the Allen and Heath. And we'll look at the scope. And the X32, Allen and Heath, X32. All right, next up, let's go to plus uh, let's go to plus 40. All right there. 36. 7, 8. Plus 40. And let's go to the same thing on the X32. Plus 40. Now let's compare the two. Now we can take a little gain out of here. Plus 40. All right, well this is interesting. This really drove me, this drove me crazy. I, um, if you look at the scope, when I fire this back up, when I'm on the Q16, it looks super quiet, but we hear it loud and buzzy. And we look at the X32, it looks super noisy and it sounds quieter. This is why it's important to listen to stuff and not rely on the scope. If we were just looking at the scope, we would think that those two sounds, that the Q16 would be much quieter at that point, uh, when actually it's much louder uh, or more noticeable, and the scope doesn't seem to show it. So I, thought I went through this setup for quite a while, trying to figure out what the heck is going on there. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up. Watch what happens when I turn down the high frequencies on the analog console. And now we'll compare them. Much more similar. And let's look at the scope with that. It's still there. Okay, so let's go to plus 60. This is really where it shows up. So we'll go to plus 60 here and plus 60 here. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And there's the X32. And now we can see it on the... I'm going to turn it down farther.
Now the scope is kind of showing us what we want, what we expect to see here. And watch what happened there, bring the highs back up. So with the highs not turned down, um, the X32 looks way louder and sounds quieter. I don't know, it's a ball of mass. But uh, what I think is happening here and is that the X32 has a lot of high frequency noise above what we can hear, above audibility. And all that high frequency noise up there is showing up on the scope. And when I brought down the analog uh, high frequency, it got a lot of that noise out. So then we were able to see those little spikes that um, uh, is that uh, 60 cycle hum or riz that we're see hearing on the Q16. So I'm going to bring that up again. We'll look at those spikes. And you can see them right here, those little sharp things. That's the problem. And um, if I turn down the highs, we can really see them. All right. Um, there's the two consoles. This QU started out way on top, super quiet, didn't have, doesn't accept as hot of a signal, and the Behringer then kind of caught up towards the end. Let's look at another oddity that I ran across, and this one involves high-level signals. So I'm going to, to bring the gains down both to minus five, so they're on the same playing field. And I'm going to remove the resistive shunt and hook the oscillator up to both consoles here. And let's go ahead and amplitude up. And we're at 50 hertz. And let's hear what we're doing. There it is. I'm going to go up to 200 hertz. It's a little bit... Um, And and I'm going to bring the gain down on this as we go up. Okay, we're up around. 2.5 volts. We've seen the peak light there. I'm going to keep turning this down. And we're at 5 volts. Click you heard. Oh, okay, right there. scope. Hear that? That is at 9.3 volts going into the Allen and Heath and to the X32. 9.3 volts does not bother it. So if on the Allen and Heath, if you look at the meters, we are not, we're at zero dB. We're at zero dB. Nothing's clipping but it will not, it does not like 9.3 volts. This is a concern. Oh, maybe it's here. Uh, let's do this. Maybe make sure it's not there. Yeah, so I was clipping the uh, little console, but um, I just brought it down, so I'm not. Um, here's a scenario where the console is clipping, but there is no indication that it's clipping. That's concerning. Um, less than ideal, but it's a uh, you know it's a very high voltage going in. Um, it's not fader related. It's on the mic pre, so we're actually clipping the input there. Um, I found another thing that was interesting, which is watch what happens when we listen to the X32, but unplug the input to the Allen and Heath. Now I've got these inputs wired together with an XLR hardwire Y. The input to the Allen and Heath has some circuitry on it that does not like 
voltages over 12 volts or so and is actually clamping down the waveform and it's affecting everything else that's wired to it. Um, strange. Um, so those are two oddities with the Allen and Heath um, that are less than ideal. Um, a secret clip that does not show up on the metering and uh, the high voltage after that clip. Now it sounds bad enough to where ideally you would hear that and uh, come back to familiarity with the board. Um, X32, it's noisier, uh, whether that noise is relevant. Um, being familiar with the gear, knowing what it does and how it goes wrong when it does go wrong and these oddities that show up. Um, super interesting, interesting stuff that um, can help you have a better show and uh, use the right gear for the job. Um, let's see, what else do I got? I had some notes here. We did some input levels in and out. We muted uh, analog noise, scope versus listen. We did the zipper gain. I didn't do a fader zipper gain, uh, zipper sound, um, the clicking sound on the gain. Um, and then the over 10 volt. All right, that pretty much does it for today. And um, cool, cool. Thanks for joining.